Hello amazing hackers, hope you're all doing well today, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to give you 5 practical tips to becoming excellent at bug bounties. Let's get right into it shall we, because we have no time to lose. Bug bounties is an extremely competitive field and the thing is, you're going to have to know your bug types very very well. I'm talking about things like if you want to look for cross-site scripting, you're going to have to know it extremely well. If you are going to look for IDORs, you're going to have to know it extremely well. Now, why do I say this? Because, of course, every single company is going to have a pen tester at work before they go to bug bounties. No company is going to go straight to bug bounties and then lose a lot of money because they were too lazy to hire a pen tester. So that's number one. You should know your bug types extremely well. Somebody's already been testing that type of bug on that target because if they wouldn't have, then they would have been pretty bad pen testers. Now, you need to pick a target that you like and you need to pick it like you would pick a partner. And this might sound insane for me, and I'm a little bit insane, I'll be the first to admit that, but it's true because when you do that, you'll notice that bug bounty targets, there's a ton of them, just like partners, potential partners, there's a ton of them, and you'll have to be pretty selective of your criteria. For me, what are disqualifiers? Well, if I see a web shop, that's a complete disqualifier. If I see um, a, a, um, a, let's talk, let's say a web shop, a web newspaper. Let's talk about a newspaper. That's going to be a complete disqualifier for me as well. Because usually what you can test on those are going to be paywall bypasses and maybe some account thing. So that's why I'm going to pick my target extremely well. I'm going to spend a lot of time doing it. If I don't like my target, if there's anything I don't like, I just say no. I'm going to quit going on to the next target because there's too many to worry about anyway. So what's also important on the number three is you should pick your platform like you pick a partner as well. What do I mean by that? You have Integrity, you have HackerOne, you have Bugcrowd. Those are some major ones. You also have things like Yes, we Hack, for example. So there are a lot of bug bounty platforms out there for you to pick. And you shouldn't just flock to the first one you see. You should look at what the positives are, what the negatives are. And I know this might be hard to do as a beginner bug bounty hunter, but that's why you should just try them all. Look at the positives, look at the negatives, and see which ones you want to stick with. Don't stick with the first one you see, because there might be other fish in the sea that you like. Now, on to number four. You need to get really good at spotting high, hidden things, like hidden parameters, things that are hiding in plain sight. Um, I'm talking about parameters that come in the response, for example. You need to copy them over to your request, which would be mass assignment, by the way, if you are an OWASP lover. Um, so there's definitely things you need to spot really, really well. My first cross-site scripting was on a target that was very old, really, really deep into the application. Uh, and I had to really just copy and paste my payload everywhere. I spotted that an image was on the ring, so I, when that image was on the ring, which was barely noticeable, which is my attack string, by the way, watch my cross-site scripting videos for that. If I see that video, uh, that image rendering, I'm going to look deeper. So I was... You could say I'm pretty decent at spotting hidden things, things that other people wouldn't think about. Things like um, for my eye doors, one target that I was testing had all of the JavaScript functions available to me. So, of course, I'm going to use that in my eye door hunting and I'm going to see which endpoints are being called. I'm going to see if I can find any hidden endpoints, maybe older versions of specific things on API. So definitely something you need to be very good at is spotting these hidden parameters, spotting hidden things. And on to the last one, number five, you need to learn to love failing. You're going to fail quite a lot and you're going to fail hard in bug bounties. My first couple of reports were crap. I'm going to admit, my current reports are still crap. But that's a different story. <laughs> my first ones were technically crap. These ones, I'm just not good at report writing. I'm not that good at report writing, I should say. Now, that's not a good thing because I'm a QA engineer, so I should be able to write my defect reports really, really well. And what I would always do is I would... Uh, include my description, steps to reproduce, any requirements, the outcome, the actual result, the expected result. So that's how I would make a report. But the first ones that I made, I made terrible reports and I failed a lot. I failed. I still fail. And the road to success is paved with pitfalls. I don't know who said it, but it's a saying that stuck with me for quite a while. 
and I think it's it, it bears a lot of merit because I've seen it I've seen it firsthand when I did bug bounties I failed a lot especially before I found my first bug now after finding my first bug I wasn't in yet because I found crossword scripting as my first bug well it turns out that I would become an idler hunter so uh, definitely some strange things happening there and after filling so often, I got turned on from one hacker one platform because I was an idiot, because I reported bad reports, I got negative karma, I couldn't report anymore for 30 days, went into integrity pretty much stuck there forever. But that's my completely own fault, I shouldn't have reported those vulnerabilities. But that taught me that I had to learn to fail because that's the way I learn. If I see something, I'm going to try it, going to fail at it, and then I learn from my mistakes. Other people learn differently, but I think in bug bounties, everybody will fail at some point and not just once, but multiple times. So it's going to be very important that you fail graciously, accept your failures and learn from it and move on. Think you're a better person than yesterday. That's important. Now, those were some tips to get very good at bug bounties. I hope they were useful to you guys and I hope I will see you in the next episode. Bye, amazing hackers.